The Industry 9 Hydra Hub was released in 2019 and instantly became popular because of its great looks, unique features, and its free hub body with a super fast 690 points of engagement. Four years later, we now know this fast engagement unfortunately comes at the cost of bearing life and broken axles. So why is that and what can you do about it? Hi, I'm Tristan from Wheelworks. First, let me explain how the Hydra free hub body works. The outside ratchet ring has 115 notches in it. There are six pulls in the free hub body, but only one of them engages at a time. 115 multiplied by six gives us our 690 engagement points. But one pull simply isn't enough to deal with all the load that needs to go from you to your wheels. So once pedaling load is applied, flex in the axle and free hub body allows it a second and then a third pull to engage and spread the load. The key here is that the axle flexing is designed into the hub and it is critical to its function. But it creates two issues which are kind of separate but also linked. The first issue is the axle. Aluminum, which is what the hydro axle is made from, is a reasonably stiff metal which doesn't bend and doesn't flex as much as, say, steel and which tends to crack when flexed repeatedly. An axle will generally fail here, where there's a stress riser caused by the sharp change in diameter, and that's exactly what we see on Hydra hubs. The second issue is the bearings. Bearings don't like flex. This type of roller bearing is designed to be used in a rigid setup, and the constant flex between its outer race, which is pressed into the hub, and its inner race, which sits on the axle, really takes a bite out of its lifespan. Once the bearing starts to wear out and stops rotating smoothly, the inner race starts slipping on the axle. This slipping leaves grooves in the axle, especially right here at the axle's already weakest point, which then causes it to break. So in short, axle flex causes bearing wear, bearing wear causes broken axles. So if you own a Hydra, what can you do? First, keep it clean. Any grit which gets into the freeha body will accelerate wear on the bearings and axles, so regular cleaning and servicing of the freeha body will help. Like many hubs, the Hydra's freeha body is tool free, so you can simply pull it off, clean everything with a dry rag, reapply some lube, and reassemble. Second, preventative maintenance. Thankfully, the Hydra hubs start making creaking noises before the axle completely breaks, giving you awareness and time to get the problems checked out. We suggest staying on top of hub maintenance and doing regular bearing swaps and also treating the axle as a consumable part and replacing it with the bearings. The heavier and more powerful you are, or if you've got the extra power and weight of an e-bike, the more you'll need to stay on top of maintenance. Third, if you're on a full suspension bike, keep your suspension pivots in good shape as excess flex here will load up the hub's axle. We see much longer Hydra service life on hardtails because of the lack of flex and twist in the frame. This might sound backwards as you might expect a hardtail to be harder on its axle, but remember, in this case, it's constant flex causing these issues, not the severity of the impact. So what can Industry 9 do to increase bearing life and decrease axle wear? Well, the fundamental design of this hub requires this flex, so it's not an easy fix for i9. Fitting a stiffer axle would increase bearing life and present axle breakage, but would increase the load on each of the pull pockets and likely lead to failures here instead of here. Axles are way cheaper than free hub bodies to manufacture, so having the cheapest part fail is actually the best outcome. What they need is a way of allowing a controlled amount of flex in the axle and free hub, but isolating this from the bearings as much as possible. Less stress on the bearings will result in less stress on the axle. Early axles look like this, but newer axles have this fancy ball and socket design, which Industry 9 call a stress riser washer kit, in an attempt to both shift the axle's weak point and allow the axle to flex slightly inside the bearing. These newer axles work better, but unfortunately, they aren't perfect. Another option for Industry 9 might be something like an engineered rubber sleeve between the free hub body and its bearing. This would work similar to the vibration isolating mounts on a car engine or suspension system, allowing flex to occur in this rubber sleeve rather than at the axle. This video isn't a dig at Industry 9 or the Hydra hub. As an independent wheel builder, we feel it's really important to share both the pros and the cons of a product you're researching so that you can make an informed decision. 
Every product comes with trade-offs and compromises. That's the way of the world. But we feel it is important that we know about them and talk about them. If you own or are thinking of owning a Hydra Hub, hopefully this helps you to understand how it's incredibly fast for your body works and what maintenance you're going to need to stay on top of. Have any questions? Ask away.